Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Sinister Urge and I'm back. I know it's been a while. I was actually on vacation. I uh, went to Mexico for almost a whole month. Um, went to visit family, so that was fun. It'd been almost 20 years since I'd been back um, and seen any of you know, my grandparents, so it was definitely overdue. Um, so I'm glad I was able to do that. Um, but I'm back. Kind of sucks though because I start work on Friday, so <laughs> uh, putting any video together is gonna, you know, take me longer now. But that's all right. Today I wanted to kind of go into something special. Um, as you can see, I have a really um, interesting guitar here, and for those that you know that know your stuff this is a mockingbird bc rich this was the first um guitar i ever purchased on my own um it wasn't very expensive i think it was like 200 dollars um, it's not like the best quality guitar but it was what i could afford at that time on my own and I was very excited to have something like this. Um, so as you can see, it has a very unique color to it. Um, so here's the thing with this guitar. I, I think maybe 15 years ago, maybe 10, can't remember. I decided I wanted to customize this guitar a little more i mean I, I i had changed the pickups by that point it wasn't these um i had some other pickups but i was like you know what i want to do a little more um I really want to make it my own and i had this great idea of basically customizing the paint job um i couldn't afford to have it sent somewhere for someone to paint it for me that was just not in my budget. I was a full-time student and I worked a minimum wage job and there's no way I was gonna be able to afford that. I decided to do it on my own. Now this story is hopefully one that'll help um, anyone who might want to customize or repaint their guitar. Um, so hopefully I can share my experiences with that and you decide if you want to still get on that journey. Was it fun? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I felt very proud of what I had accomplished. Was it hard? Hell yeah, it was. It was very difficult. It is very time consuming. Um, and you really need to be careful with what you're doing or else you're going to end up with uh, not so great of a pain job. And you'll see what I'm talking about uh, in a while. So first thing was first, I, you know, I took everything off I took the tuners out and I took the knobs the you know the tailpiece um, the the humbuckers the everything I just took all the hardware completely took off the the, ne uh, the neck uh, but I still took off the tuners because the idea was that I was going to um, paint the headstock which as you can see that did not happen and I'll get to why. Um, so I did all that. The, uh, the journey, of course, started with having to strip the paint from the guitar, which was, it was just a black, just black paint. It was a black guitar. Um, I was not aware <clears throat> that there were different types of uh, paints that would go on guitars. I learned the hard way because I had gotten some paint thinner. I figured, sure, I just, you know, start rubbing it, scratching it off or whatever. And then I quickly realized that wasn't working. There was no, like, it wasn't coming off. I was scratching and scratching and um, I forgot what I used to, to take the paint off, but it just wasn't coming off. I was like, this is some BS. <laughs> like I, so I went online and I tried to figure out why um, using paint thinner wasn't working. Um, then that's when I realized that there were multiple types of paints that I use. 
And the most common, I think, especially for, you know, like entry level guitars is, I believe, polyurethane. And that is a very thick kind of enamel type of paint. Um, again, that's what you'll see in your budget guitars, on most budget guitars. Um, I found out that it was really hard to strip that with just paint thinner. So my pops actually got some or had some industrial strength uh, paint stripper. So I thought, cool, this is going to totally work. Well, it did work, but it was a lot of work trying to remove all the paint. It took me maybe, I want to say almost a week to completely remove all the, 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 the black paint. Um, it was very difficult. It was a lot of uh, elbow grease. Also, if you do that, I learned industrial strength uh, removal. It kind of burns. If it touches your skin, it burns. And then your hand, and then you start getting itchy, right? But it will burn. And you're not going to get like a third degree burn. I mean, you know, if you get a little bit on, you, you'll feel it. Um, but you have to be very careful with that stuff. Um, so wear gloves, um, long sleeves, so that, you know, because if you're like stripping paint, you'll, you'll, you'll get a little goop somewhere. You might not see it and you might rub against that goop and you're, you know, you're going to start feeling it right away. Um, but yeah, I did that. That took me. I, again, I want to say maybe almost a week. Yeah, that was rough. That was, you know, I, I have some pictures of it. Hopefully I can find them. I can uh, put them in the video. But yeah, that took a while. So finally it was all stripped and I had actually forgotten to remove it on the headstock because I had the, the neck laid out somewhere else. Um, so I really wasn't paying attention and I completely forgot and this is why the headstock still has the original, you know, BC Rich paint job on it. Um, so yeah, this was just my fault, completely forgot about it. So the next job was to get the paint. Now again, I discovered there are many different types of paints um, and I was really trying to go with the easiest and the most affordable and and things that I thought I could I could get away with using without like completely botching it but you're gonna realize when I start talking about this paint job which is I mean I love it it's it's pretty sick um, but you're gonna realize that I it was still botched <laughs> so what I decided to do is I bought these little pigments powders um, I, I think I bought black and green. Do I still have them around? They're probably around somewhere. And what you're supposed to do with those is you're supposed to mix it with a solution. I mean, there's a ratio to it. I don't remember. But that all went in a little, you know, container, little glass container. And then the idea is that you're supposed to spray it with a, you know, air, like a, a spray gun. Well, I don't have a spray gun. Uh, my pops has an air compressor that I could have used, but I didn't have a spray gun and those, you know, again, I was trying to stay within a certain amount of money because I didn't have that much. So I couldn't use anything like that. And that would have been the ideal way because it's a lot quicker and it should have done a better job. What I did end up doing is I bought aerosol can like about this big and you can attach that little the little the mixture of paint onto the little aerosol can i forgot how it worked and i don't have that anymore because actually i do look what i found this is the powder make sure that focuses on that this is the powder i used it says it was from guitar re ranch it's black solvent based dye and it makes a quart so this is a little powder I use so that was mixed in with the solvent and it was placed in one of these as you can see there's a the little um, that glass container I was talking about 
And I bought these uh, Preval, Preval, I'm not sure how to say it, but this is the sprayer. This is the aerosol can. This is supposed to work like the spray gun. So that's the idea, right? You, you make your mixture here and then the uh, aerosol can helps you, it get sucked up and then you spray it on your guitar or whatever you're painting. There it is, right there, the sprayer, the glass container. I'm surprised I still had that. I think I have one more that I haven't used and the, I still have powder in there. It's um, didn't use a lot. So you do, you do that mixture and then you spray it like, you're, like a spray can, right? So uh, after I had stripped it, I um, sm you know you gotta smoothen it out so that you don't have any any bumps, any nicks, anything nasty that's gonna show up when you paint the guitar. So I sanded it down, uh, which is another process that I learned about that also was time consuming. All of this is time consuming, by the way. This took me I think two months to do. Um, but anyway, so I sanded it down, then I primed it, used the primer, a clear, clear coat primer. Then I, I think my problem was one of the, pro one of the problems was, is that I didn't prime it enough. Um, you know, you prime it and you set it for a day and then you have, you prime it again. I think I just didn't prime it enough. And it's gonna show on one of the dents. Um, so I did that, I primed it, I think I primed it maybe three times, which I don't think was a lot. Um, I think I just was really anxious to get it started with, to get started with the paint. So what I did is once that was done, I forgot how many times I did that, put the mixture, you know, put it with the, I think it might've been mineral spirits that you use with that with the uh, with the little powder pigments. Um, I can't remember what it was, but sprayed it, right? And I was hanging it on, it was a hanger and I was outside and I was spraying it and it was coming out a little too watery uh, when it was coming, when it was spraying out. Now also the, um, it wasn't really coming out as a, like a smooth, like if you had a, uh, spray can it wasn't coming out very smooth um, there was times where it was kind of almost like spitting out some of the uh, the paint like, pss, 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 right um, but I I think it was just also a little too watered down I, mean, I don't think I mixed it right I'm pretty sure I didn't mix it right but it turned the idea was to have this all green like this this uh, as you can see, it's green. And then um, what ended up happening is that once I sprayed, it started to smear, it started to fall down. Gravity was working that, that day. And this is how I ended up with all those streaks. Look at that. Now, this wasn't the plan. This was, this is what happened when I messed, when I guess I didn't mix it right or I wasn't spraying it correctly or whatever the deal was, but it, it streaked, okay? Now, granted, this looks, to me, this looks badass. I could have, I couldn't have planned this myself. It just worked out this way and to me, this looks really cool. Um, and I've gotten, you know, people are like, whoa, what kind of guitar is that? Or how, you know, how did that happen? And it's, you know, it's just unique. I, I've never seen anything like this. Um, and in the end, I was like, yeah, this looks pretty cool. So that accident um, definitely made it very unique. Now, then I went to the black. So the idea was to have the sides of the guitar all around be black. Um, I quickly noticed that 
I think I was mixing some of the uh, the paint darker. Sometimes it was, it felt like it was a little darker. Sometimes it was a little light. Again, I wasn't getting the mixtures right, which is uh, you please test it out because I didn't really test it out. So test it out um, to make sure that you get the right mixture. So there are some spots that look black, like the bottom looks black. Some spots look black and then other spots look a little blue um a little dark blue the way i ended up doing that because as you can see it's not that bad of a job on the edges like around um you know it's not really messing with the body right it doesn't have like a burst you know look to it because i taped down all across the guitar i taped it so that it wouldn't kind of smear onto the body tape the back same thing um so then painted it and you know it actually was looking pretty good problem is i didn't give it enough coats again i under sprayed now i think i'm done i'm like yay this project is finally you know getting there so what do i do is i get ahead of myself i did um put a clear coat right again i don't think i used enough clear coat i think i, I might have maybe done two passes i can't remember it probably was a little more than two but it um it wasn't enough and i know it wasn't enough because I was like, okay, cool. The next thing I need to do is I need to make this glossy, right? Because, you know, that's how guitars are, just glossy and awesome. So what happened, see, what had happened was I used my dad's buffer. Um, and I started buffing, put a little compound, and then, you know, and it was looking great. And there's a great picture I have that makes the guitar just look like a mirror it was it was amazing i loved it. it looked great um but i went too hard and too deep on the sanding and i caused this that is not a scratch that is from sanding it from like buffing it too much sorry not sanding buffing i buffed it too much and i went through I went through the paint that pissed me off so much because it was a lot of work I'm telling you this was almost two months in the making and I was so upset that that happened um, and I started seeing that I was kind of doing that in some other spots that told me that I didn't do a good enough job with my layers um, but what was done was done I couldn't do anything about it at that point because uh, I would have probably had to restart and I was I was over it. I was exhausted. Um, but as you can see, some of the uh, guitar still holds some of that gloss. Look at that. All right? That's a nice gloss. I mean, I like it. Um, but then the other parts where, you know, I put my hand on is already kind of wearing down a little bit of a matte. A matte finish here and then uh, some gloss uh, I mean it's still this is still a very unique guitar now then I had to put all the hardware back pickups and all that stuff and the neck um, the neck I felt like I it wasn't put on correctly by me I think because um, after that I started getting a lot of fret buzz and I had a lot of fret buzz and for for a long time and I also ended up losing the back plate <sighs> I don't know where that went I lost it somewhere um, so please make sure that when you guys are doing a job like this put everything in one spot I thought I did I lost the back the back plate somewhere um, these knobs as you can see they, there, there are no knobs right for the um, tone and volume and i don't remember why i do have them i th think um also you know 
um, get into the electronics because I wanted to completely do this guitar from paint to electronics. So I ended up making, buying a um, push pull pot right there. So both pickups can now be uh, split. I can split the, uh, the pickups to have a single coil feel. Um, for some reason, because I, I had done this myself and, you know, it didn't do that great of a job when I put it all back together. So I ended up taking it to a, to a, the guitar tech, you know, by my house. Um, now then I switched to the guitar pickups. Um, of course it came stock with BC Ridge pickups, which, you know, are not the best. Um, and I'm not talking about the rock fields. I'm just talking about BC Ridge pickups. I have a, a jazz on the neck and I, her, I had originally ha, uh, put in a, a JB on the, the, the bridge and that was great. I love the sound of it. It sounded amazing. And then I ended up switching it just because I, I wanted to have the same color <laughs> and instead of getting another JB on the bridge, I ended up putting a distortion. Uh, so these are both Seymour Duncan uh, pickups. So I put a distortion on there and that was a big mistake because although it cuts through, right? You're trying to solo and it, it'll cut through, right? Problem is it's really harsh and it really thins out um, the guitar. And this is not even, you know, with a single coil uh, split. It really thins out the guitar. I, it, I think it just has to do with the wood. Um, it just doesn't sound very good on um, this guitar. Um, this guitar has been sitting, it, it sat in a bag for many, many years because again, that fret buzz was just killing me. Um, I thought I could fix it. I thought I can mess with the, uh, the frets and, you know, polish, um, not polish them, but uh, fix them. And I think it kept, I kept making it worse and this guitar was just never working right. Um, then I finally decided to send it in. They fixed the, the, the fret problem. You know, I went in and they fixed, you know, the electronics because I, I was, um, something was wrong with the electronics too. So send it in, the, the dude did a really good job. Uh, the gentleman um, did a really good job and it's very clean. It's a very clean job. Uh, you can see it's a very clean job. Um, unfortunately, again, it's really annoying that I don't have the back plate because um, then I, you know, there's sometimes there's some feedback issues. But the again, the uh, the big thing with this one is that it sounds very harsh when you're on the neck. Sorry, on yeah, on the bridge position, it's very harsh. Um, so. I'll probably have to switch off and put in a, a, a put the JB back in. Uh, I don't own a, one anymore because I sold it. Also, I have to buy a new one. But um, it is what it is. It does sound really cool when it's it's single coil. Uh, when it's got that single coil sound, it sounds great, especially on the neck position. And then I'll, I'll another video. I'll try to get some sounds out of it. Um, and you can hear what it sounds like. Um, but yeah, this was my journey with this BC Rich Mockingbird. Um, I hope you learned what not to do when trying to get into a project like this. It's, it was fun. I don't think I would do it again. I think now I would just send it into someone so that they could uh, paint it for me. But then again, I mean, a paint job like this, I was never going to get. This is just random and it just looks so cool. People really dig it. And the, they told me that they actually wanted to buy it when they saw it at the guitar shop when it was getting fixed. Someone wanted to purchase it because it looked super cool, but it's mine. Um, so yeah, hope you guys dug this video. Catch you on the next one. Rock and roll.